Hi everyone, with the launch of Sophos Firewall version 20, we're thrilled to introduce two exciting features that enhance your authentication and user management capabilities. Azure AD support for captive portal authentication and Azure AD group import support for streamlined user and policy management. In SFOS 19.5, we introduced Azure AD integration, which allowed you to seamlessly integrate your organization's AD directory with Sophos Firewall, enabling authentication of Azure AD users when signing into the web admin console. Building on this, Sophos Firewall v20 takes it a step further by expanding Azure AD single sign-on support, or SSO, to include end-user authentication through the captive portal. Let's get started by configuring an Azure AD application in the Azure portal. For web admin console and captive portal authentication, you can use either a separate Azure application or a common Azure application to authenticate both firewall web console users and user requests. In this demo, I'm using a common app for both. To learn how to create an Azure application, check out the video linked in the description. I've already created an app in Azure AD. Let's take a look. Under App Registrations, you can see it here. If I open the app, I can see all the details. This information is required in Sophos Firewall, so note this down. In the Firewall dashboard, go to Authentication, Servers. I've already created a new server for Azure integration. I'll open it up, and you can see the same details from Azure that I already populated. When setting up role mapping, there's now a new user type. If you're creating a server for regular users to log in, choose User. In this case, I'm using the app for both Firewall Web Console authentication and regular network user authentication. So I've selected Administrator as the type and defined a custom role that will dynamically create an admin if this value is present in the access token. Make sure to test the connection to ensure everything is working correctly. Next, I'll copy the redirect URIs and paste them into the Azure application. Returning to Azure AD, open the redirect URI section. And here you can see I've already added the two callbacks. Now let's go back to the firewall. Under authentication, services, we'll choose our authentication methods. For firewall, select the Azure AD server that was just created. And do the same for the administration authentication method. Next, I'll create an FQDN host group to allow the server to connect to the trusted Microsoft Azure URLs needed for SSO login. Go to Hosts and Services, FQDN Host Group. Here, I've already created a new group, and you can see that I've added in all the relevant URLs needed for SSO login. Refer to the documentation linked in the description for further information. Next, I'll set up a firewall rule that allows Microsoft Azure URLs. Go to Rules and Policies. I previously created the Microsoft Azure Allowed URLs rule. Scrolling down, you can see the destination is set to the FQDN host group I just created. I've also created a subnet rule to allow DNS requests. This will allow DNS resolution without end user authentication. Furthermore, I've created an internet traffic policy that will only allow known and authenticated users. So I'll save this configuration. Next, you can import user groups to quickly create group-based security policies. To do this, go to Authentication, Servers. Once again, we see our integration server, and I'll click on the import icon on the right. This opens the import wizard with a few options. You'll first need to add the group read all application permission in the Azure app graph API permissions, as shown here. Refer to the documentation linked in the description for further information. Back in the firewall dashboard, you can import all groups or select groups that match specific attributes. In my case, I only want to import the group named Marketing Ops. You can also filter for other attributes like description, object ID, mail, mail nickname, and security. This gives you granular control for how you wish to import groups. I'll click Next to fetch the groups from Azure. Now I'll select this group to import it. Here I'll configure the policies I wish to apply to all imported groups. In this next window, I have the ability to define specific policies for each imported group as well. I'll review my configuration and click Finish to complete the import. And now that I have the group, I can further create security policies to meet my organization's requirements. Okay, so now let's see the user authentication in action. I have two users, Alex, who is a firewall admin, and Mike, who is a normal user and part of the marketing ops group. I'll show an example with Mike first. 
Let's first verify the group ownership for Mike and Azure. I'll go to Groups, Marketing Ops. We see there is one member and one user. Now, if we go to Users and search for Mike, we can click on Group Membership, and we see that he's indeed part of the Marketing Ops group. Now, Mike is trying to access the internet, and he wasn't signed into the network previously. He wants to learn more about Sophos, so he uses the address bar to search. However, since he's not signed in, he can't access the internet and is prompted with a link to the network login page. If he follows the link, it will display the captive portal screen, and Mike can now use SSO to log in using the same credentials he uses across his organization's apps. And now he's successfully signed in and has internet access. We can confirm Mike has logged in in the firewall under Current Activities, Live Users. We can also verify which group Mike is assigned to. Go to Authentication, Users. And Mike is part of the Marketing Ops group that we imported earlier, so this method for import is very easy. We can further verify the authentication mechanism in the Log Viewer. I'll filter by Authentication, and we can see Mike was authenticated using Azure AD SSO. Please note that in a shared PC environment, users must explicitly sign out using the Sign Out button. The options available for local authentication, like logout due to inactivity or simply closing the browser tab, do not apply to Azure SSO authentication. The firewall does not have control over token validity, and by default, Azure tokens are valid for seven days. Next, let's look at the firewall web admin authentication with Alex. Alex wants to update a few settings in the firewall and wants to sign in again using the same organization credentials for SSO. We've assigned a specific role to Alex and the firewall will only grant access if that role is present and configured. We can verify this configuration in the Azure portal. I'll return to the app I created in Azure earlier and go to Managed Application, Users and Groups. And we see that Alex is included here with the role Admin Full Access. If you recall, this token is required for the admin role in Sophos Firewall, which we configured previously. Moving on, let's explore the dynamic role update feature. Mike was previously a regular network user, but now needs to manage the firewall. If he tries to sign in, he's denied access because the appropriate role is not assigned. To allow admin access, we don't need to make any changes in the firewall, only Azure. Go back to the Firewall SSO Integration app, click Add User or Group, and select Mike. Assign the admin full access role, or whichever role is relevant, and that's it. Now, if Mike tries to sign into the firewall again, he's granted access. Please note that if the admin role is removed from the Azure side, the firewall will not automatically update the admin user to a normal network user. This change must be done manually in the firewall. And that covers our demo of Captive Portal Authentication and Azure AD Group Import. Stay tuned as we release more V20 demos. I hope you found this video useful. Let us know by giving us a thumbs up on TechBits. For further assistance, view and post questions on community.sophos.com and go to techvids.sophos.com for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching.